Hello, and welcome to today's episode of our historical journey. In this video, we will be exploring a remarkable rescue effort that took place during World War II, the Kinder Transport. This initiative, authorized by the British government, aimed to save thousands of Jewish children from Nazi persecution. Let's delve into the details. The Kindertransport, meaning children transport in German, was a nine-month rescue effort that began after the devastating Kristallnacht pogroms in November 1938. During this event, Nazis attacked Jewish individuals and properties, conducted mass arrests, and unleashed a wave of violence against the Jewish population. In the aftermath of Kristallnacht, the plight of Jewish refugees, stranded in Nazi Germany became a pressing issue. The British government responded to calls for action and, on November 21, 1938, a debate was held in the British Parliament. Despite recently imposing restrictions on Jewish immigration to Palestine, the British government decided to allow an unspecified number of children under the age of 17 to enter the United Kingdom. The hope was that these children would eventually reunite with their parents once the crisis had passed. On December 1, 1938, less than a month after Kristallnacht, the first Kinder transport departed from Germany. It arrived in Harwich, England, the following day, carrying 196 children from a Jewish orphanage in Berlin that had been burned down by the Nazis. Subsequent transports left from various cities such as Vienna, Berlin, and Prague, with children from smaller towns traveling to meet the transports. The Kinder transport would not have been possible without the efforts of numerous individuals and organizations who worked tirelessly to save these children. People of different faiths, including Christians of various denominations and Jews, collaborated on this mission of compassion and rescue. Leaders such as Lola Hahn Warburg, a member of a prominent German-Jewish banking family, played a crucial role in establishing the framework for the rescues. Wilfred Israel, a German-Jewish businessman, used his extensive network to secure passage for countless Jews. Former British Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin appealed to British conscience through a BBC broadcast, supporting the Lord Baldwin Fund for Refugees. Other notable figures include Viscount Walter Horace Samuel, Sir Wyndham Deeds, Rebecca Seif, Rabbi Solomon Schoenfeld, Nicholas Winton, Norman Bentwich, and Quakers Bertha Bracey and Jean Hoare. Their collective efforts and dedication saved the lives of thousands of children. Upon arriving in the United Kingdom, the Kinder Transport children were dispersed to various locations. Some were taken to London, while others stayed in summer holiday camps until suitable host families, hostels, or schools could be found for them. Organizations such as B'nai B'rith, the Refugee Children's Movement, the YMCA, the Society of Friends, and the Chief Rabbi's Religious Emergency Council played significant roles in settling the children. Private donations, ranging from money and clothing to houses, also played an important part in their support. The children, many of whom had little or no knowledge of the English language, were dispersed to different parts of the United Kingdom. Some lived in group settings, while others were placed with foster families. It is important to note that while most families, both Jewish and non-Jewish, treated the children with kindness and developed strong bonds with them, there were cases where some children experienced abuse or maltreatment. Despite the challenges they faced, the Kinder Transport children showed remarkable resilience and strength. Some of them, upon reaching the age of 18, even volunteered to join the British or Australian military, taking up arms against Nazi Germany. In the spring of 1940, as hysteria over a supposed fifth column threat within Britain raged, Jewish refugees, along with Austrian and German non-Jews, Italians, and others, 
were interned by the British government. More than 1,000 kinder transportees over the age of 16 were interned on the Isle of Man and other sites. Furthermore, some male kinder transportees were shipped to Canada on the same vessels as German prisoners of war, while others were transported to Australia aboard the infamous Danera, known as a hell ship due to the overcrowded conditions and mistreatment of foreign nationals by British escort troops. The British public's opposition to further internment grew after the tragic sinking of the Arandora Star in July 1940. This ship carried more than 1,200 internees, including Italians as well as German and Austrian refugees, resulting in the loss of around 800 lives. Many of those who had been deported were ultimately returned to Britain. Fast forward to June 1989, which marked the 50th anniversary of the Kinder Transport. What began as a local reunion in London organized by Bertha Leverton, a kinder transport child herself, turned into an international gathering, the very first reunion of kinder transportees, regardless of where they had lived during the war. Over 1,200 kinder, along with their spouses and children, arrived from various parts of the United Kingdom, Israel Australia, Canada, the United States, and more. They came together to reconnect with old friends, celebrate their survival, express their gratitude to the British people, and honor the parents who selflessly sent them away to save their lives. The success of the reunion inspired the establishment of the Kinder Transport Association in 1989, based in New York. This organization's mission is to locate, reunite, and bring together Kinder and their families, educate the public about this lesser-known chapter of Holocaust history, and support charitable work dedicated to helping children without parents, regardless of race or religion. In recognition of the Kinder Transport's historical significance, the Kinder Transport Association established World Kinder Transport Day on December 2, 2013, commemorating the 75th anniversary of the arrival of the first Kinder Transport in Great Britain. The Kinder Transport stands as a testament to the power of compassion, resilience, and the collective efforts of individuals and organizations during one of humanity's darkest periods. Through their actions, the Kinder Transportees not only survived, but they also built new lives, formed families, and contributed to the societies that welcomed them. Their stories remind us of the importance of compassion, and the impact that one act of kindness can have on countless lives. As we reflect on the history of the Kinder Transport, it serves as a solemn reminder of the atrocities committed during the Holocaust and the urgent need to protect and support refugees fleeing persecution today. The Kinder Transport teaches us that in times of crisis, it is our duty to stand up for justice, provide sanctuary, and extend a helping hand to those in need. As we conclude this vlog, let us honor the memory of the Kinder Transport and all those who played a role in saving the lives of these children. Let us remember the bravery of the parents who made the heartbreaking decision to send their children away, and the courage of the Kinder Transportees themselves, who faced uncertainty and challenges with resilience. May we never forget the lessons of the Kinder Transport, and may we strive to create a world where compassion triumphs over hatred, where no child is left abandoned or persecuted. Together, we can ensure. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the history of the Kinder Transport. If you found this video informative and moving, please consider sharing it with others to raise awareness about this remarkable chapter in Holocaust history. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more educational content, and don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care and keep spreading love and compassion. Goodbye.